Hello everybody, I want to welcome you today to Tarpon Springs, Florida. My name is John Saxer and I want to thank you, uh, Orange Blossom Films at uh, gmail.com for producing this film. We're here today in Tarpon Springs at 418 Orange Street in the backyard and we're standing in front of an interesting structure. It's a uh, structure I dug out of the ground about uh, three months ago and it took us about three dump truck loads to the dump to get this thing tore out. Apparently someone had covered it over a little bit trying to hide it and what we've determined it was is a portal to the underworld. There's structures all over the world like this. Uh, there's supposed to be one on each continent. And uh, as far as I know, the only one reported so far is this one here on the North American continent. There's one in Turkey. There's one in southern Greece. There's uh, one in Israel. Uh, and uh, they're usually built somewhat similar to this. There's a, a arch over the top. It looks like a doorway entrance into a tomb. Yet when you go down into the entrance, there's actually no entrance. In order to get into the underworld, you would have to actually be deceased and go through the door in your spirit. We call this Persephone's portal to the underworld. And when I first uncovered this, I said to myself, what is a portal to Hades doing in a place like this? Well, that sparked my consciousness because about 20 years ago, I was up in uh, Newport Ritchie and I walked by a rock with a face on it and I said, what is a Polynesian stone doing in a place like this? Anyway, uh, that Polynesian stone turned out to be an ancient stone anchor from the fleet of Atlantis. Now Plato said that seven miles away from the center point of Atlantis was the ancient Greek Garden of Hesperides, the original Garden of Eden. And that's where we are right now, seven miles away from where I first saw this stone with a uh, face on it. The face had a crown, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> a crown on it, a starfish crown. And that starfish crown represents the crown of Poseidon. So a face with a starfish crown on it, with a human face, would represent Poseidon's son, which means that Atlas was depicted on the big stone up at Newport Ritchie. Down here, seven and a half miles away, we have this portal. And the portal is situated over the Garden of Hesperides. So let's think about this a little bit. If you have a bunch of Greek gods, let's say there's 12 original gods, another 12 or 13 gods before them, and uh, a few gods after them along with their children, we have only about 50 characters in the world representing Greek mythology. Those uh, characters would have to be in close proximity to each other in order for any of the Greek mythology to have occurred. So when I said to myself, what is a portal to Hades doing in a place like this? I was basically reminding myself that, well, here we have the Garden of Hesperides in Tarpon Springs, and under it would naturally be Hades' uh, dominion, which would be the underworld. And above that would be the Garden of Hesperides, and out to the sea behind me, the Gulf of Mexico, would be Poseidon's uh, dominion, and above us in the air would be Zeus's dominion. They drew lots, Hades got the underworld, Poseidon got the got the sea and Zeus got the uh, air or the above world. So it's not really so unusual to find a portal to Hades in a place like this because this may be very well the original place where the portal to Hades took place. In ancient times uh, they had the myth of corn and corn was Persephone. And she was taken into the underworld when the ground gave out below her. Underneath Tarpon Springs and the rest of the area around here, we have a huge aquifer. And the aquifer 
runs underneath the entire uh, area. And as the water runs under the aquifer, uh, land gives out. And the land gives out and a sinkhole develops. So the sinkhole sinking and Persephone falling in the sinkhole along with the swine that fell in with her may have been uh, directly related to this area because the ground opened up as a sinkhole she fell in. And when uh, Hades saw Persephone, he saw that she was so beautiful that he took her as his wife. He made her queen of the underworld and uh, she was considered the goddess that pushed up the seeds and uh, created the plant life around the world. Uh, her mother Dimitri was so angry that Hades had took her for his wife, uh, it was called the Rape of Persephone, that uh, she stopped the plants from growing all over the world and she demanded her daughter back. So they, uh, Zeus intervened, made an agreement with uh, Hades to let her go and come up from the underworld and to return to the underworld three months out of the year where the other nine months she would be on the uh, upper world. So she needed a doorway to go back and forth afterwards, after, I mean, after all she was a god. So that's where we get around the world these portals to the underworld because they're made as uh, uh, creations to allow Persephone to come back and forth through the underworld. So right here we have a typical example of a, of a portal to the underworld. If you check the internet, you'll see that uh, there are gates. It's, uh, some people call it a gate to hell, but it's a gate, it's an entrance point, and it looks like uh, we're going down into a tomb here. Uh, you would step down in here, you would step down in here, and then in spirit you would enter into the portal and you would uh, meet up with Hades where he would give you a little brief tour of the underworld and then you would be left to wander the underworld. Uh, most people don't come back out of the underworld once they get in there because Hades is basically uh, a god that keeps people in the underworld. Uh, the, the structure has like a keyhole entrance here, uh, sort of a keyhole lock that you would get in and out of, giving us further uh, confirmation that this is an underworld gate and basically uh, that it's a locked gate. Once you get in, you can't get out. There is one person that can release people from the underworld and that's when Jesus Christ comes back. He's supposed to release the souls from purgatory which is something that uh, Hades would really appreciate because he's probably tired of keeping all those souls guarded and uh, secured in the underworld. It's a long-term job that he's been given and it would be a relief for him to have Christ come back and release these souls out of the underworld. As of yet, the souls have not come out. I've been living uh, about uh, 20 yards away from the underworld and I haven't seen any souls come out yet. But so that's what we have gonna, here. We're going to just cut All right. for a second. Yeah. So long All right. Okay. What I wanted to do is talk a little bit about Persephone. I made sort of a, a effigy to Persephone here, the queen of the underworld. Um, Persephone was the goddess of the underworld, and she was considered to be the goddess that pushed forth the seeds from the underworld up and brought them up into the plant form. So her gift to mankind and to the world was to produce the plant life. Um, so I have her behind uh, this Persephone's portal so that we have a, uh, an image of her in a way uh, watching over her gate. I have this rock here representing the stone uh, that Jacob slept on, the Jacob's pillow stone. And uh, when I first excavated this uh, structure here, the, we had nothing but dirt here after I was through. That was just one month ago. 
And as you can see, there's all sorts of plants coming up in the last month in a way, in a fashion which you might not expect because they're so abundant throughout the whole yard. It gives me a feeling that Persephone really is pushing out these seeds and is trying to tell the rest of the world that this really is her portal. Um, I've done other research around the area of Tarpon Springs and we'll show you some of that research later on in this documentary. And it shows that Tarpon Springs was the ancient garden of Hesperides. So the gods were in close proximity to each other in order to create all these myths. So it seems more than natural to me that we would have a portal to Hades right above the garden of Hesperides. And if you'll check your Greek mythology, you'll notice that uh, the, the underground river, the river Styx that goes underground, issues forth up into the surface by an underground river, the river of life. And uh, later on, we'll show you that spring, the spring of life. So for this portal to be here over on the North American continent instead of Greek makes a lot of sense because the Greeks were, uh, the Greek gods were probably over here on the west coast of Florida before the flood of Noah, before the flood of Atlantis, this is where the Greek gods grew up, and, uh, and this is what mankind has been searching for for thousands of years ever since we lost the Garden of Eden. I'll get into the reasons why we lost the Garden of Eden later on, but uh, I just wanted to point out that this stone, the Stone of Jacob, is a pillow stone. The actual pillow stone of Jacob was probably a little bit bigger and a little flatter so that he could lay his neck back down on the stone like this as he's sleeping and that's how they use the stones for a pillow. Uh, my line goes all the way back to Jacob. My last name is Von Sachs in Switzerland. I'm Johann Christian Von Sachs and Jacob's last name was from Isaac. So Von Sachs is the name that's connected with uh, Jacob from Isaac and my last name goes all the way back to Isaac. So that's the reason why I put the pillar stone of Jacob up here as a representative of that pillow stone. And later on in the documentary, I'll get into uh, why, why and where that pillow stone is actually now. It's not here, but the spirit of that pillow stone is here because uh, the story is, is that Jacob said from on his deathbed that the scepter shall never leave Israel. So what I put up here is a scepter uh, that uh, Persephone is watching over, an indicator that uh, the line of Jacob has finally returned here to the Garden of Hesperides, the original place from which mankind was created. And here in Tarpon Springs, it's interesting to note that we have a sponge industry, and the sponge industry was started by a whole bunch of Greeks that came from uh, Greece in uh, 1900s to 1910 in order to do sponge fishing. And it's rather interesting to me that the sponge fishermen from Greece, Greece came here because what they're doing is essentially the same thing as salmon when they go back to their spawning ground. They're returning to their source, and the Greeks have returned to their source here at the Garden of Hesperides, and uh, uh, that's how the sponge industry started here. They were drawn here much in the same way that I was drawn to this location as a psychic archaeologist. How did you find it? Well, uh, what happened was... Uh, my previous landlord was uh, losing his house and he needed me to move out. His house was being reclaimed by the bank. It was uh, being repossessed. And I had to start looking for a location. And so uh, it was about three blocks away from here. And so I started uh, walking around town with my dogs and it took me two months to find this place. And I kept walking by this place and the yard was filled up with uh, vines and bushes and you couldn't even see this thing. Uh, you can maybe see the little, the top of this, but you couldn't see the rest of it. And so 
Uh, as a psychic archaeologist, uh, I, I read a book in 1970 by Jeff Goodman called Psychic Archaeology. And I thought to myself, boy, it'd be great to be a psychic archaeologist. And, uh, and uh, I walked by here a few times, and it looked like uh, if I cleared the property out, I might be able to work out a deal with the landlord. Uh, Peter and uh, maybe move in with my dogs and have a place for me and my dogs now that I was losing my last location. I just was drawn to this location. I can't really tell you what force drew me here other than to say that the same force drew me to this location as drew the Greeks to Tarpon Springs. It's a matter of going back to your source and trying to uncover who you really are in life and who you and what you're supposed to be doing in life. And so I cleared all the property. It took me about a month to clear the property. And uh, this is what we found when we first looked at it. We thought that it might be a fire pit or we thought that it might be a fish pond. But then we started studying and uh, I said, well, it looks like it could be a doorway to the underworld. and we started studying doorways to the underworld because I'd never really even seen a doorway to the underworld. And at that point, uh, we saw that other doorways to the underworld looked a whole lot like this. And we'll edit in some shots of doorways to the underworld during this part of the conversation where you'll see that uh, underworld doorways do look like this. But to have one over here, over the Garden of Hesperides, is very significant because if we have the first entrance into the underworld by Persephone through a sinkhole, then they'd want to make a doorway for this goddess to come back and forth in and out of the underworld due to agreement made by Zeus and, and Hades for her to return to the upper world once in a while because Persephone's mother Demeter wanted her to be able to come back to the upper world once in a while. So three months out of the year she has to go back into the underworld and six, nine months out of the year she can come up. So the three months that she goes into the underworld it's the beginning of winter and when she finally comes back out of the underworld it's the beginning of spring and so that's how her seasons developed when she goes back and forth between the underworld and the upper world. Now we have a theory on how this particular structure was built about 110 years ago. Um, because the Greek fishermen came to Tarpon Springs, we've developed a theory. Uh, at Delphi, they would always use Spartan young women for the oracles. They felt that the Spartan women and the Spartan men had descended directly from the line of, uh, of Jacob. And uh, the Spartan ladies were able to do uh, communication with their gods. They had to be royal blood Spartan ladies. And they would, uh, they would uh, feel and sense the area much in the same way that I was drawn to this area. We feel that maybe a Spartan lady had married a Greek fisherman and she had perhaps felt this area was important and asked her husband to build this doorway to the underworld. Um, around this doorway we have um, two layers of uh, plant garden. We feel that the upper layer probably had uh, lilies or roses and then the second layer around probably had the opposite, uh, which would be lilies or roses. Uh, the lilies and the roses represent royalty. And uh, what would happen would be uh, she, she would come out here and she would sit on a bench probably like this and she would communicate with her deceased ancestors by communicating through the gate directly to them. The word democracy in Greece comes from the communication with your dead uh, ancestors in order to eliminate the possibility of mistakes in the living world that have been learned by the dead ancestors in the uh, underworld, they would communicate to the living, their descendants, how to properly create a, a government that would operate uh, righteously and honorably amongst all their citizens. 
in order to get that information, they would have to talk back and forth between uh, the demons, the underworld beings, and the uh, above world beings. So she would probably sit here, go into a trance-like state, and communicate with the focus of her uh, ancestor, and the ancestor, maybe a grandfather or grandmother, would relate uh, information back and forth. And so the proper moves could be made on the upper world based on the lessons learned uh, by their ancestors given out through the portal. So uh, a beautiful garden was probably here back 110 years ago. And uh, this would have been the way that uh, she communicated. Uh, and perhaps uh, she would learn uh, any answers to questions she would ask. And so she was probably a Spartan lady that had married a Greek and was able to communicate back and forth between the underworld, the world of the dead, and the world of the living. And that's our theory at this point. We have no idea because at this point we don't have our psychic here, which actually we do have a psychic that can communicate back and forth between this gate and our above world. So when we get her here, we can actually ask her what she thinks about that theory. Okay. I've gone down into the entrance to the portal here in order to communicate with one of my dead ancestors. I'm not quite sure, but I believe that Alexander the Great was one of my dead ancestors.